Today we will be discussing ecosystems in time, or how an ecosystem changes due to other outside environments. Hopefully by the end of this video, you will be able to discuss the consequences of a new species moving into a new area, as well as relate the concepts of succession to ecosystems and their stability. To start off with, let's review as to what an ecosystem is. An ecosystem is all the biotic and abiotic things in an area. So if you look at Doug Pond ecosystem, it is all of the organisms that live in Doug Pond as well as the pH, temperature, and amount of wind in the area. Each biotic factor affects the abiotic as well as the abiotic affecting the biotic. There's many interactions included in this ecosystem that impact the entire ecosystem. Now how each ecosystem changes depends on the ecosystem, but there is a general way and one major aspect is when species move between ecosystems. Species move because as we learned previously, competition puts pressure on the organisms to move to new areas. When two organisms are competing in an area, the loser generally moves. Now what happens to this organism as they move to a new ecosystem is they can either again compete and lose and continue moving or die out or they fit in and when they fit in they do what's called colonize and if you think of the colonies that is what Europeans did when they came over to America they colonized it and that is what a new organism does when it enters an ecosystem this new organism is called an exotic or an invasive species. You might have heard these two terms before. An invasive species generally has a negative connotation to it. And humans have become major causes of these invasive species moving between continents. Some examples of this, to help you understand them fully, is the European green crab. The European, European green crab was introduced from Europe via the bilge because when crabs are little babies, they're what's known as plankton. They're tiny single-celled organisms that move with the water. So when the ships in Europe would take on water in order to go and make their way across the Atlantic, and then when they get to, uh, say, a Boston port, they would unload that water, and in that water were baby crabs. And those crabs, because they had no competition in the area, started to dominate and started to overgrow and now take over. So if you go fishing and crabbing in the Boston Harbor, you will pull up basically all European green crabs instead of the Jonah or king crabs that are actually crabs that originated in the area. Another example is purple loosestrife, which people don't realize is actually an invasive species because you see it everywhere. It first appeared in the 1800s, so it has become a very dominant plant. And it is technically an invasive species, but because it is around so much, most people don't realize. And again, that one also came from Europe. And this is why there are many laws that don't allow humans to bring plants and animals to different countries. So when the species moves and comes into the ecosystem, it makes a huge difference. It changes the entire ecosystem because it changes these interactions and adds new interactions and adds competition, mutualism, parasitism, any of those interactions that we have discussed before completely change, which then completely changes the ecosystem. And those species have to either adapt or die out. And the adapting does show a evolutionary process. So as much as we are bad-mouthing the invasive species, they would move without us, we just enhance it and we make it a larger difference. So succession is this whole process, is when one community replaces another due to a species entering or leaving. And it's when some major things change. Now there are different types of succession. There is primary succession and secondary succession. Primary succession what is hard to come by nowadays, but when the glaciers were receding, they left a lot of bare rock, and this bare rock needed to become soil before anything could grow on it, and that is primary succession. 
It's when no organisms have ever lived there before. Secondary succession is when there's a disturbed site. So when some species moves into a new ecosystem, that would be secondary succession. A more drastic idea is when there's a fire in an area and that wipes out everything and there's already soil, but think new things need to start growing and the whole ecosystem needs to grow back. So the stages of succession are the same for both types except for that first stage. The first stage is when everything gets colonized. So plants that can grow really fast and easily in various different types of um, weather, those are the ones that are going to colonize. And those are usually your small annuals, the mosses and ferns. And this is where you need lichen for primary succession because a lichen is an organism that can break down that rock because a tree won't grow on a rock. It doesn't have place for its roots. So the lichen breaks down the rocks so that other things can come in and grow. So that's stage one small annuals. Then the second stage is when larger perennials come in, like your shrubs, because now there's better soil for them and they can start growing and generally grow and take over some of the small annuals, but there are still some small annuals there. Then the third stage is when the tree species come in, because those the shrubs have graded a much better soil and these can also live longer and they start to compete and start to kill off a lot of the mosses and ferns in the small annuals, but this is getting to the end. So once the trees start coming in, you start to notice that there's an actual ecosystem there. Now throughout this whole process, the types and specific species of plants and animals depends on which biome you are in. Now this picture will depict a succession of a taiga biome throughout all different types. So you have succession from rock, succession from water, and succession from fire. You can see the main difference is the lichen versus the annuals in the first stage. Instead of having lichen, the fire already has soil, so it just has the annuals. So when it actually gets to the end, it is known as a climax community. So when nothing can enter without another species exiting, it is known as a climax community and those are what's known as your biomes. So you have eight different biomes and those are what make an ecosystem unique and all of your abiotic and biotic factors in each biome gives it a special, in, those special interactions and those are your climax community. So everything connects together and everything flows. Now, does a climax community ever really stop? And the answer is really no because as soon as you reach that climax community, another species could move in, and then that will force another species out, and that is the process of succession. Things never really stop changing, and if you go across the United States or go across the world, you will see it is a, like a patchwork quilt of ecosystems and how they're moving and changing throughout, and it's because there are disturbances. There's climate, climate changes, there's every sort of little thing. Humans impact them, other species. So nothing ever is the same. And that is the beauty of ecology, is you can take your trip across the US and you will see a whole bunch of different ecosystems in different stages of succession. And it is the true beauty of ecology.